Hello and welcome to PDCA Cycle, which is lesson two of the quality management system. The PDCA Cycle is a simple but powerful tool in helping the organization to improve their processes, products or services and achieve the highest overall performance. By following this simple four-stage cycle, which is plan, do, check, act, businesses or organizations can systematically address their problems and implement solutions which lead the business to continuous improvement. The continuous improvement makes the organization to satisfy the needs of its stakeholders, such as customers, employees, vendors, and so on. We are living in a rapidly changing business situation. If we fail to adapt with this change, our business will face crisis or it will be pushed out of the market. This is the point where the PDCA cycle comes in. PDCA cycle provides a structured method to manage change, adapt with change, drive innovation and stay competitive in an ever changing business environment by continuously planning doing checking and acting our organization can stay agile and responsive to new challenges and opportunities meaning pdca cycle makes our business to be alert or able to move quickly and easily thus if you are looking to learn more about pdca cycle and its vast benefits for driving continuous improvements in your organization within a competitive uncertain business environment i am sure you are in the right place be sure to stay until the end of this session and if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so that you never miss any update. Let's get started. As you remember, in lesson one, we discussed QMS as a structured framework ensuring compliance or alignment with stakeholder needs through the defined process and policies. Or QMS first identifies the requirements of our stakeholders and meeting their needs using the working documents such as processes, policies, and procedures. Besides, I explained some of the key benefits of implementing quality management system for the organization. By properly implementing quality management system, them, our organization will gain a competitive advantage over its counterparts or its competitors. QMS enables our organization to be proactive in risk identification, not only identifying the risk, but also it develops an effective mitigation strategy for that identified problem. Besides through QMS, our organization can achieve continuous improvement in its products or services, which ultimately enhance our customer satisfaction. To implement quality management system, we can use ISO 9001-2015, which is an international standard that defines the requirements of quality management system. Meaning ISO 9001-2015 is a framework or requirements for meeting the needs of our stakeholders consistently. To ensure the proper implementation of ISO 9001-2015, our organization must undertake an assessment by ISO auditors and obtain certification. It's a confirmation that proves an effective implementation of quality management system. In addition, obtaining ISO certificate enhances global recognition and reinforces stakeholder trust for our organization. Anyway, if you want lesson one, I will put the link in the description box below. In today's lesson, I will discuss the following three important issues regarding the powerful continuous improvement tool, which is PDCA cycle. The first point is understanding the PDCA cycle. The second is the four stages of PDCA cycle. And the third is key features of PDCA cycle. Let's start with understanding the PDCA cycle. ISO 9001-2015 has 11 clauses in total starting from clause 0 or introduction clause to clause 10. In fact, from clause 0 to clause 3, there are not mandatory clauses for implementation of ISO 9001-2015 standards. Even though these four clauses are not mandatory to implement ISO 9001-2015, they can still provide the purpose, benefit, and define the scope of ISO 9001-2015 standard. To know the definitions of some of the important key terms found in ISO 9001-2015, we have to refer these four clauses. In general, these four clauses are essential for better understanding of ISO 9001-2015. PDCA cycle, which is our topic of discussion, is categorized under zero clause or introduction clause of ISO 9001-2015. In addition to the PDCA cycle, clause 0 or the introduction clause also covers the process approach, the quality management principles, and the risk-based thinking, which we will explore in the upcoming lessons. PDCA cycle is a continuous improvement framework 
that aligns perfectly with the structure of QMS, meaning all the clauses of ISO 9001-1015 can be mapped to each stage of PDCA cycle as shown in this figure. Thus, QMS ISO 9001-2015 can be defined and explained through the lens of PDCA cycle. The PDCA cycle is also known as the Deming cycle because it was developed by Dr. Edward Deming. It's a four-step methodology and serves as a fundamental framework for continuous improvement and problem solving in different sectors. As a cornerstone of quality management, the PDCA cycle is more relevant than ever in today's fast paced business environment. With rapid technological advancements and shifting market dynamics, organizations require a structured yet adaptable approach to navigate change effectively. As you see in this figure, the cyclical nature of PDCA cycle fosters adaptation to the context and continuous refinement, making PDCA cycle a multi-purpose tool for enhancing quality, efficiency, and innovation across different industries. This iterative process ensures that improvements are not just temporary fixes, rather improvements become part of an organization's culture, driving sustained growth and long-term development. Think of the PDC cycle as a steering wheel. It must keep turning to maintain the momentum and drive progress. Each rotation of the PDC cycle brings new insights, new standards, helping organizations learn from past experience and uncover new opportunities for improvement. This continuous loop of learning and refinement is what makes PDCA cycle the most powerful mechanism for achieving operational excellence. The PDCA cycle has four stages. The first stage of PDCA cycle is planning. Planning is just setting the foundation of what we desire to do or what we want to achieve in our organization. That is a point where we set our goals or objectives. This is a critical starting point where we lay the groundwork or foundation for everything that follows. So we have to pay attention because this is a foundation stage for the upcoming tasks. Here we need to be clear and specific about what we want to achieve. Setting vague or unclear goals can lead to confusion and lack of directions. Thus, it is essential to have a clear vision of success. We also need to figure out how we are going to achieve it. This means developing a detailed strategy and outlining the steps necessary to reach our goals is also essential. In planning stage, we have to focus on understanding the stakeholder requirements in a clear and specific manner. Here, the organization identifies the quality objectives based on the requirements of the stakeholders and it establishes a process, a procedure, manual, or in general working documents which are needed to achieve these quality objectives. The quality objective is established just to achieve the requirements of our stakeholders. This stage is all about preparation. We need to gather information, talk to our team, and understand the problem we are trying to solve for our customers. The more time we spend in planning, the better our results will be because proper planning helps us to anticipate challenges and develop solutions proactively. If we fail in planning, we fail entirely. No other phase of PDCA cycle can compensate the failure in planning stage. Here there is one very good proverb which was said by Benjamin Franklin. Failing to plan is planning to fail. So if we fail in planning or if we are not planning, so indirectly we plan to fail. Therefore, we have to pay attention for these foundational phases. Let's take a practical example to see how planning is important. Think of it like building a house. We need a blueprint or a plan before we start our construction. We cannot just start building a house without a proper plan or blueprint, right? You need to know what kind of houses you want to build, how big it is going to be, and what materials you are requiring to use. Let's summarize the key practical activities that we have to do in the planning phase. So the first point here is that we have to know the requirements of our stakeholders. Knowing the requirements of our stakeholders is the initial step for planning. So next we have to develop the quality policy and define the quality objectives based on the needs of the stakeholders. Quality policy is a formal statement and established by the top level management that defines the organization's commitment to quality. The other activity is creating documented processes, process and manuals for achieving 
the desired quality objectives. After defining the quality policy and the quality objectives, we have to create documented procedures, process, and manuals for achieving the desired quality objectives. And the other issue is we have to identify risks and opportunities using the risk-based thinking approach, meaning we have to proactively addressing the potential risks while leveraging opportunities. And finally, we have to allocate resources and assign roles and responsibility to the respective employees and leaders so that they can achieve our objectives. The second stage of PDCA cycle is a do phase, which is putting our plan into action. We already have a plan and now we are putting our plan into action. Here we are implementing or performing the plan or the desired objective that we already set in phase one, that is in planning stage. The do phase is all about the execution of our plan. In this stage, we are taking our plan into reality. While performing the tasks, our employees and leaders should follow the documented processes and procedures that we prepared in planning phase to ensure consistency. The key activities that will be conducted in do phase train our employees and leaders about the working documents. Once the employees and the leaders are trained, so we have to ensure that all the employees follow the documented process and procedures in their daily tasks to ensure consistency. The third stage of PDC cycle is check. Check is measuring and monitoring the progress. This stage is a very crucial stage because it allows us to evaluate the effectiveness of performance by carefully examining our progress we can determine whether our strategies are working as intended or as planned or not. This is a time where we review our performance. Are we meeting our targets or objectives that we already set in planning stage or not? Are we on the track to achieve our goals or not? These are the important questions that we need to answer here in this stage. We compare our results with our predetermined plan. This comparison helps us to understand the gap between our current performance and our desired outcomes or plans. The main point is to identify the reasons behind any discrepancies. The check stage is all about learning from our mistakes. In general, understanding or learning what went wrong helps us to avoid repeating the same errors in the future again. In summary, the key activities in check phase include conducting internal audits to check adherence to our plan, maintain records or reports as evidence of compliance with the planning stage, and analyze the key performance indicators to assess whether there is an improvement or not. The final stage of PDC cycle is ACT. And in this stage, we are making improvement and adjustment. This is where we make changes based on what we learned in the check state. If we are not meeting our goals, we need to make adjustments for the second cycle of PDCA by either changing our plan or by trying different approaches or strategies than we have used before. So we have to change our plan or our strategy. The act stage is all about improvement. We are always looking for ways to get better than before. We take what we have learned in check phase and we apply it here. After making changes or adjustments, we start the PDCA cycle again from planning. By continuous improvement, we can help our organization adapt new changes, resolve recurring issues, and enhance the performance. At this stage, we have to take corrective actions to address the non-conformities before proceeding to the next cycle or before starting the new PDC cycle again, we have to take preventive actions to resolve the recurring or the repeated issues. Some of the key activities in ACT phase include corrective and preventive actions to resolve the recurring issues. We have to update our working documents based on the lessons learned in check phase. As per the finding in the check phase, we can either set new goals or plans or we have to adjust or we have to change our strategies for the next PDCA cycle. Now let us see some of the key features of PDCA cycle. The first feature is a continuous improvement. As you see in the figure, the PDCA cycle is a continuous loop or an iterative process ensuring ongoing improvement and refinement. Here the main point is that at every iteration of the PDCA cycle, we are always getting better and better, which shows we are in a continuous improvement. The second feature of PDCA cycle is its a structured approach, which means it provides a clear step-by-step -step framework for solving the problem. We are always planning, doing, checking, and acting sequentially to refine our process, products, and services. This is how we can achieve continuous improvement using the PDCA cycle. And the last feature of PDC cycle is its flexibility. PDC cycle can be applied across various industries. It can help any organization to bring continuous improvement.
In general, when we embrace the PDCA cycle, we can embrace continuous improvement and that is a key for success and excellence for the organization. Lastly, I highly recommend to apply the PDCA cycle in your organization properly and effectively to achieve long-lasting improvement in every aspect of your organization. This is the end of our today's discussion on PDCA cycle and thank you for listening. If you do have any question or comment, please let me know. Once again, don't forget to subscribe for more insightful lessons on how to implement quality management system ISO 9001-2015 in your organization effectively. If you like this particular video, please hit the like button and share to your friends. Thank you.